Hello and welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to talk about Vine's Law. Now Vine's Law goes on the basis of looking at black body radiation and assuming that a star also follows that. So just to explain, a black body, okay, is something used in thermodynamics to express an object which not only absorbs all wavelengths of radiation, but also can emit them too. So a black body absorbs and emits all wavelengths of EM. Okay. <clears throat> and we're going to say that a star follows this as well, that a star is a black body. And a star indeed does have the potential to emit all wavelengths of the electromagnetic spectrum, from gamma radiation to radio waves. So, Vine used a little bit of information from black body radiation, and this is done by Boltzmann. And Boltzmann and Vine actually have a couple of uh, rules that actually come off of each other. So, what Boltzmann did is Boltzmann looked at the wavelength the intensity of the wavelengths emitted and uh, actually mapped them and the amount of them that was done. So the intensity of wavelengths were emitted. And he looked at that over different temperatures. And this is a wavelength here, okay? And what he noticed, if I draw some graphs here, okay, what he noticed here is that every temperature had a different sort of distribution, but always had a peak where there was a wavelength that was most frequently emitted. Now, this one would be something like 4,000 Kelvin. Well, this one would be only about 1,000 Kelvin. And there are other ones representing different temperatures. And so this is called a Boltzmann distribution, okay? As you can see, on the higher temperature, I have more of shorter wavelengths being emitted. And remember, shorter wavelengths due to the formula E equals HF, or HC over lambda. The smaller wavelengths mean they have much higher energy. So on the higher temperature, where they have higher energy, they tend to release lower wavelengths. Well, on the bigger one here, this one here, the colder one seems to have a peak wavelength that is much bigger, and this is because this one's bigger, which means the energy they receive is smaller. Now, what Vine did was look at these Boltzmann distributions and actually go, you know what, I want to actually look at the temperature versus this lambda max, okay? The peak wavelength that's we've emitted. So initially, a graph was plotted of lambda max temperature versus lambda max. And the graph that was produced was this. So I had a proportional relationship that wasn't linear, wasn't directly proportional, it's actually inversely proportional. This is saying that lambda max is proportional to one over the temperature. So what then happened was Vine took this a bit further and he plotted lambda max versus one over the temperature and produced a graph like this, which is a straight line graph. The gradient of this graph, incidentally, was 2.9 times 10 to the minus 3 metres Kelvin. Please be aware that is metres, not milli. Okay. Which leads me on to Vine's law. Vine's law is that lambda max times by the temperature 
is 2.9 times 10 to the minus 3 meters Kelvin. So this means that these two numbers will make constant. So if my temperature gets hotter, my wavelength gets smaller. So the hotter stars tend to be blue. The colder stars tend to be of the redder variety. And this is what happens when you get a red giant. The actual outer corona starts to cool down and starts to release a peak wavelength in the red region. So if I'm able to get red stars and I'm able to get blue stars, why don't I get green? And it's all to do with the distribution. So if I go back to this Boltzmann distribution here, I'm going to bring it back to this whole idea that wavelength of colours is between 400 nanometers to about 700 nanometers. Where this here is blue and this here is a reddy colour. So green is going to be somewhere around in the middle here. So we're going to say that's around about 550 nanometers here. Now as you can see, this is actually quite a narrow band. This is very tiny. And if I was to draw whoops, the outer limits of my visual spectrum here, so remember this is wavelength and this is intensity, okay, I still have quite a lot of blue and quite a lot of red also being emitted. And this is the thing, stars will seem, uh, they, you won't get green stars because it's slap bang in the middle of the colours which means that you still have a very high proportion of blue and red being emitted as well as that green. So the colour you're going to see that star is a white colour. So let's actually look at what our sun does. Let's actually look at our sun and let's see if we can relate any of the numbers. Okay. So our sun is approximately about 6,000 Kelvin. So let's use Fine's law. So lambda max times by 6,000 equals 2.9 times 10 to the minus 3. So lambda max is going to be 2.93 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 6,000. So 2.93 2 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 6,000 is going to be 483 times 10 to the minus 7. 4.83, which is about 483 nanometers, which is near the blue end of the spectrum. Now, we don't see the sky as a blue, we don't see the sun as a blue color at all. And then again, this brings us back to the idea of distribution. That our peak wavelength is about 483. But I'm still going to have between 400 and 700 nanometers a significant amount of the rest of the spectrum. So I'm going to have some red and I'm going to have some yellow. This means our sun seems a yellowy colour. Okay, so it's not quite white because I have got quite a lot of blue and it, there is a significant drop to red, so I will have more of a yellowy colour. But this fact that the peak wavelength that's emitted from sun is on the blue end of the spectrum will make no surprise with the fact that you keep getting told to wear sunscreen to protect against UVA and UVA, the UV, UVA and UVB rays. Because our peak wavelengths are around the blue end of the spectrum, we also emit quite a lot of UV which is why we must wear sunscreen to protect our skin from UV rays. So that there is the basis of black body radiation and Vine's law.